Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this spline tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can easily import 3D models like this on a platform like Sketchfab directly into Spline. In this example, I'm going to show you two different models that you can import. So in this first one, I'll show you how you can import a simple fish like this. And then in the next example, we'll do something a little bit different and how you can import a model like this that's already animated. So you can see right here how the truck is animated. I'll show you how you can also import animated 3D models into Spline. So let's just jump right into it. So if you're new to the 3D space, they have a lot of different marketplaces. Um, in this example, I'm just going to show you Sketchfab, but they also have ones called TurboSquid, and there's a few other ones out there where you can download free 3D models, and then they also have more paid premium type of 3D models. So in this example, we're just going to be using uh, some free models. So what you can do is you go to a platform like Sketchfab and in this example, I wanted one of a fish. So you could literally just type in the words free fish, and then you're going to see that there's a lot of free models, but uh, they also have some paid ones. So if you look right here in the top right corner where my mouse is, if there's a dollar sign, that means that it's not free. But if you type in the word free fish, you're going to get a lot more results that are, of course, free. So if we choose this one right here, I like this example because the textures of the fish look pretty good and it looked like it was low poly, so it doesn't look like it's too heavy on the page. So if you just kind of go around, look at the fish first, make sure that there's no holes in the model or anything like that and everything looks good. If you're happy with this, this button right here will appear if it's a free model. Uh, it says download 3D model. So it's as simple as clicking that. And then they have a lot of different options right here. They have a FBX, USDZ, and then a GLTF and a GLB. So there's a lot of different formats right here. So what I recommend is downloading this one right here called the GLB format. This is going to automatically have the textures built into this one file and it keeps everything a lot smaller. And if they give you different options, I recommend going for the smaller one first. And then if you're happy with how it looks at the texture level, just make sure that you try to always start from the lowest megabytes right here. So in this case, it's only 460 kilobytes, which is pretty good. So you just want to go ahead and click the download button right here. And next, we're going to jump into Spline and just import that in. And here we are inside of a new Spline file. And what I recommend is just in another window, click and drag in your new GLB file. So once I do that and just drop it in here, it's automatically going to appear right back here. And the very first thing I recommend is go ahead and remove this rectangle. So by default, Spline always starts out with just this rectangle. And as you can see right here, we already have our fish right here is fully textured. So everything looks like it was imported correctly. Next, what I recommend is let's go ahead and clean up these layers. So depending on how the original author or creator of this model uh, has everything saved out. In this case, this is a great scenario where it's just one big layer but you can see it nested all within like five or six different layers. So that makes it a lot harder to work with. So in this situation, what I'm going to recommend is go ahead and just copy this layer right here, control C, and then I'll just do a control V. So this is going to make it where it's its own layer, not nested within five or six layers. So just go ahead and delete the original one. And now you can see right here, we have our fish right here. So you can just go ahead and double click this fish model, just name it something like that. And you can see right here, everything is looking good. The thing I like to always do is work inside the position of like zero, zero. So like an absolute zero position. So in this situation, I'm just going to select my fish underneath position here on the right. I'm just going to zero all of these things out. So the X coordinate, the Y and the Z, let's get that over to zero, zero. Now you can see in this situation, the gizmo is also kind of rotated. Now, what I recommend is right clicking on the fish and if you scroll down or you can actually let me right click here and it, it will show a little bit easier. And if you scroll down where it says reset transform, you can reset the gizmo to its original state. So in this case, if I click this, it's automatically going to flip the fish and this is the way I want to have it. So this will give you a lot more control. It's a lot easier to manage it when the gizmos zeroed out like this. And the next thing I like to do is zoom in and just kind of make sure that the textures and everything are looking good. So if I move the camera around, it looks like the textures on the outside all look good. They're imported correctly. I'm starting to zoom in a little bit and you can see right here, the thing that you might notice is if you look inside of his mouth right here, it's like hollow. It's seen through the mesh. So 
a really cool feature inside of Spline is they give you the option to add this texture to both the front and the back of a mesh. So let me show you what that means. So if you click on your fish right here, if you scroll down, you can see right here under visibility, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you click this button right here that says both. So once I click that, now you can see, I can see inside of his mouth right now and you can see it's not just hollow. So you're actually seeing the inside of the fish. It's kind of cool right there, right? So it's showing the texture on both sides of the mesh. And if you look right here, the fin disappears if it was on the front, you see that? So sometimes meshes just won't even show. So you're gonna to wanna to probably go ahead and click both. Like I said, this is always gonna vary depending on the model itself and how it was set up. And if you wanna understand how the image is being wrapped around the model, if you just click on your fish model, if you go underneath material, in this image right here, you can see this is the image that that GLB file has embedded automatically inside your model. And the last thing I recommend is just making sure that everything is optimized. So in this situation, I'm gonna click the export button right up here. And you see underneath the overview performance tab, they have this option right here where it says your scene is optimized. If you click this button where it says run test, it's gonna show you how big the page is gonna render out. So if I render out this fish right now and embed it on a website, it'll be about one megabyte. So you can see right here, it shows you an overview of how many polygons you have, how many different materials you have. So if you have a situation where it's a little bit heavy on the textures, for example, you could always go ahead and manually add your own textures. Rather than use the image they used, you can maybe bring in an image that's lower res or something like that, or just change it to a different color and it will lower the size. So let me show you how that works. So you can see right now it's an image that I just showed you. So if I go ahead and remove that image for some reason, and if we just keep it as like a white fish, let's make it a little bit a different color. So if you go to something like this and you strip away the image itself, you're gonna notice that the export size is gonna be much smaller. So now if I click export and hit run test, you can see it's only 100, I'm sorry, that's only 16 kilobytes. So you can see right there that the image itself is what was making the export size a little bit bigger. So, you know, depending on your use case, you might not need the image and you might just need a model of a fish like this. And then you could always add a little bit more effects to it and stuff like that without using images and keep the file size small. So that's how you can import a pretty simple model. Now let's go ahead and show you how you can import an animated model like this into Spline and the different controls they give you. And to download an animated model, it's the same exact thing. Uh, you can see on a platform like this, it's animated whenever you see the timeline like this. And of course you see some sort of animation. So in this case, I wanted a low poly truck and I saw that it had the little you know, smoke coming out of the uh, pipe right here. So it's the same as the fish. So if you just go down and click uh, download 3D model and we're gonna download the GLB file. And as you can see, this is only one megabyte. So just go ahead and download that and import it just like you did with the fish. I'm just going to click and drag in the GLB file right here and then just go here just like the other one. Let's go ahead and delete the rectangle. And if I just go ahead and hit the play button, you're going to see that it's animated automatically with the little smoke coming out. So I thought that was really cool and I wanted to know how that works. So the way it works is you can see right here, if I click on the very top layer, uh, you can see, of course, this has a whole bunch of different... Um, different models. So this is a lot more detailed than the fish model and it's got a lot more pieces rather than just one big mesh. Everything is like separated out into different layers. So you can see like this whole layer is just for the glass. You got one for just the tires. But let's go back up to the top and show you how the animated thing pulls in. So if you look right here in the very top layer, you can see this tab right here called animation. And the way it works is that GLB file has a lot of different uh, data that it's attached. So it's got the materials and you can also import different animation sequences. So you can see right here that the animation is 446 frames. And if you just scrub along, you can see that it is just animating the smoke right here. So that's how it works. It's automatically bringing in the event at a start and then it's playing the animation. So now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to change out that animation and have it where, let's say you only want it to animate when the user hovers over the truck. So that's really easy to do. So in this case, instead of the start uh, event, let's go ahead and change that to hover. So mouse hover, and then the action is, you can see right here, that object, and then we're gonna choose that animation. And that's it, that's how easy it is 
to make it where the animation is only going to play when I hover over the model. So let's go ahead and hover over it. So you can see right there, the user is going to give an interaction when they hover over the model. And it will restart every time they do that. So as you can see, there's tons of different options underneath your events right here. So you're not limited to just a mouse hover. You could tie these animations to a lot of different things. So different keystrokes, mouse up, mouse down. There's a tons of different things you can do. And I just wanted to kind of quickly make this video on how you can import different models into Spline and all the different options they give you. And as you can see right here, this uh, model is really lightweight uh, because it's not really bringing in any images. So if I go ahead and click the performance, you can see right here, everything is only 963 kilobytes. So you could even make this a little more lightweight if you go ahead and start deleting things. So if you want to get it down to maybe just a couple hundred kilobytes, you could start to remove like maybe this tire back here, maybe some of these extra little uh, cutouts like the ladder you can get rid of. And everything that you start to remove from your model is going to make your file size smaller. So if page performance is a big thing, always think about getting rid of extra polygons or in this case little models like the ladder and then materials. Those are your two biggest things if you want to worry about page performance is how many polygons and the uh, materials that it's using. And that's it for this tutorial on how to import 3D models into Spline. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.